In this lab exercise, the front end is acting as a CDN and will use request smuggling to deceive the front end and get it to cache the response to the My Account page of our victim within one of the application's static assets. Well, let's get started. I'm on the homepage of the lab here, and the first thing we want to do is detect and confirm the CLTE vulnerability. So I'm going to switch to Burp and go to Proxy in HTTP History and get the GET request for the homepage and send it to Repeater. And I'm going to go through these steps rather quickly because these, these are the same steps that we've done in previous labs. So first, let me change the width here. And then I'm going to go to the inspector window and downgrade the request to use HTTP 1.1. Then I'm going to change the request method over to post. I'm going to delete unnecessary headers, so anything above content type and underneath the host header. Then I'm going to go to, because this is a timing technique, to the request settings here and turn off update content length automatically. I'm going to show new lines just because that's easy for request smuggling. It's quite handy. I'm going to add a transfer encoding chunk header here. And we're going to send a chunk of size 3, ABC, followed by a chunk size or an invalid chunk size X. And I'm going to change the content length to 6 and send this request. And it's already taken a long time to get back. So if we see a timeout here in the response, that's a very strong indication that this endpoint is vulnerable to a CLTE attack. And we can see here confirmation that the uh, request or the response has timed out. Now I'm going to confirm the CLTE vulnerability. So I'm going to delete what we had in the request body here before. And instead, I'm going to send a terminating chunk to indicate to the backend that a chunked message has ended. And then we're going to request something that doesn't exist. So some gibberish here using HTTP 1.1. We're also going to add a content length and a content type. Um, we're going to add a request body parameter x for a value of none. And I'm going to change the content length to tree because we have two bytes here and we want at least one byte of our normal request to be appended to our smuggled request here. The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on update content length automatically again because the front end is using content length. Then we want the front end to forward the entire request that we see here to the backend server and update content length automatically takes care of that for us. So let's send this request. And then I'm going to go switch to the browser and send this request. And we get a 404 not found. So that confirms to us that the CLTE vulnerability exists because it's not finding this resource that um, doesn't exist on the backend server. And we get a 404 for that. Now I'm going to go back to the lab and then go to the My Account page and log in as Wiener password Peter. And we can see our API key here. So I'm going to go switch back to Burp and then go to Proxy and HTTP History. And we can see the get request for my account here. So I'm going to send that to repeater and switch to repeater. And the thing is, if we send this request, we get our and search for API key. We can see our API key here. But we can see in the request here that it's adding our ID. And for our victim, we don't know what the ID of our victim will be. So let's see if this works without adding that ID query parameter. Let's send this. And we can see we still get a match for our API key. So that's good news for us because that means that we can just use the naked my account without the query parameter ID uh, for the username. Now, if we go to proxy and HTTP history, we can see the get request for a static asset tracking.js here. So let's send that to repeater. I'm going to send this request as well to get a response here. And we can see the static asset has a uh, max age of 30 and it has a current age of zero. If I keep sending the request, it'll go all the way up to 30, after which the cache for this file uh, will expire. So what we'll do is we'll try and deceive the front end server so it caches the response for our victim's my account page within this static asset. So I'm going to go switch back to the previous tab for my account and copy the get request here and then switch to our attack request. And instead of uh, requesting the resource that doesn't exist, we're going to request the my account page. And then we want to delete what we had here before, so the content type and the content length. And we're going to add a axignore header for a value of x, but don't follow it up with a new line. So make sure there's no new line here. Because if I go to the um, static asset here and I copy everything and I go back here, what will happen is after we've poisoned the backend with this prefix and the victim requests the static asset, it'll be appended to our uh, prefix like this. So it will fix the uh, double get request that we would have because it's added to the axignore header. But more importantly, it will append a correct host header and will append the session cookie of our victim. And that ensures that we get back a response from the backend server for the My Account page of our victim. So let's execute this attack. I'm going to remove what I pasted here before. So everything um, until xignore x. Make sure there's no new line here. 
And then I'm going to go to the uh, static asset tab and actually move it closer to my attack request. And then I'm going to send this request a few times. You can see that the age is now at two seconds. What we're going to do is when it hits 27 seconds, so when it's about to expire, we're going to send uh, a few attack requests in quick succession to um, poison the backend multiple times. And what we're hoping is that when this cache expires, that the victim is going to be requesting the static asset and that um, the asset will be replaced with a response for the My Account page of our victim. So I'm going to send this a few times now. That should be enough. Let's go back to the static asset and send it. And yeah, we get a 200 OK, and it's not the static asset any longer. It's likely, let's see, API key. And we can see, yes, it's the username is administrator, and it's the API key for the administrator. So I'm going to copy this and then switch back to the lab and submit the solution. OK. And we get congratulations. You've solved the lab. I hope this was helpful to you, and thank you for watching.